Greetings and welcome to another edition of Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful hymn. We all know it. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you. Listen to these words of Scripture from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect person, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And listen to these words from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. The gifts he gave were that some would become apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Ministry is for the building up of the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of of God. Perfecting. Well, that's quite a challenge for us. So what does perfecting mean? Well, it does describe the setting of a broken bone, but also it means putting into the condition that something should be acceptable. Ministry guides and directs us into a spiritual condition acceptable to God, developing the mature spiritual character we must have to acceptably serve the Lord. Now, that's a tall order, isn't it? Perfecting? I've heard of sports figures perfecting their skills so that they might compete beyond just the acceptable. Like Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, those of the past history of, of our sports. Kobe Bryant, he was not perfect, some none of us are, but he understood that what was important was God and faith and family. Yes, he was a Christian, and he turned his faith in God to receive mercy and to be a better man after a very regretful condition. So rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Some of us may come close to perfection in some things, like cooking, not me. Golf? Nah, not me. Shuffleboard? Yeah. Music? Well, I do pretty well with music. And friendship? Oh, I like to have friends. But, you know, in any of these things, we're never perfect, are we? Though we keep on striving for, for, for perfection. And Scripture tells us that it is this striving factor that helps us to develop spiritual Character, character, acceptable to the Lord. And that tribe, that striving for perfection, that is trying enough. Is that, is it trying enough just to strive? Well, how can I prepare myself each day to be that spiritual person who's preparing to minister to others? How? Well, number one, help others. We all have to learn how to help each other. Number two, make a wish list that includes, I wish that I might treat myself like I would my own best friend. Number three, I will learn to forgive. Number four, I will practice patience. Number five, I will always be truthful. Number six, I will start a gratitude journal, remembering with happiness those things big and small that made me smile. And I will laugh often, knowing that laughing carries the energy of joy. Silliness, maybe, 
playfulness and happiness, fun, yeah, laughing. And I will seek to eliminate envy because spirituality and selfishness, they don't work well together. And I will attempt to find faith bigger than myself. And I will seek to be in community with believers. And I will learn to savor the little things in life, to enjoy those small, positive moments. And I will pray, pray, pray. What did Jesus do in his ministry? He socializes at the marriage of Cana starting out. He counseled people one-on-one. -on -one. He blessed people. We certainly can say, God bless you. Jesus took time to teach and to parent little children. We can certainly say, God bless you. Hmm. I'd read last week this story of ministry. There was an elderly widow, and she was quite restricted in her activities, but she was eager to serve Christ. And after praying about this, she, she realized that she could bring blessing to others by playing the piano. So the next day, she placed a small ad in the Oakland Tribune. Pianist will play hymns by phone daily for those who are sick and despondent, and the service is free. You know what happened? The notice included a number to dial, and when people called, she would ask, what hymn would you like to hear? And within a few months, her playing had brought cheer to several hundred people. Many of them freely poured out their hearts to her, and she was able to help and encourage them just by playing the songs. We all have opportunities for ministry, don't we? There are people in, in around us who live in our community who would benefit by the ministry of visitation, people who are ill. I know this is a caring community that... Um, we live in, and that praying for others is either with them or for them, but it's a ministry. Knowing how to get someone to smile. Hey, that's a ministry. We could do that. Making and delivering a meal to someone homebound. That's a ministry. Yes. There is a fellow by the name of Rodney Gypsy Smith, and he was a British evangelist back in 1947, and he conducted evangelistic campaigns in the United States and Great Britain for over 70 years. He was an early member of the Salvation Army. Yes, he traveled extensively around the world on evangelistic crusades, drawing crowds numbering in the hundreds of thousands, much like Billy Graham. Gypsy Smith told of a man who said he had received no inspiration from the Bible, although he had gone through it several times. Let it go through you once, replied Smith. Let the Bible go through you once. Then it will tell you a different story. When we make a practice of reading the Bible daily, then it does indeed go through us. That is what the facilitates growth and changing, and as the scripture says, perfecting our faith. It's not the huddle, but the plays that count. The job of the church is not to impact the church, but to impact the world. It's like a huddle in a football game. 67,000 people don't play money for a ticket to watch the team huddle. They you go to a football game, you're looking for two and a half hours of, of like action, not just 11 men standing in a circle and talking. 67 people wouldn't pay money for that. What they want to know is the challenge. They want to know what the play is that they have in secret and how is it going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, 
the challenge for our church is not what we do when we call our Sunday morning huddle, but when what we do when we break our huddle and head to our Sunday morning assignment. People that need to be visited. Yes, when Satan lines up against us, what difference does it make that we are Christians? Are we perfecting our personal ministries so that we do more than just talk about them? Do we demonstrate our commitment to ministry? Listen to these words from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. The gifts he gave were more that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to treasure and to measure the full stature of Christ. That, my friends, that's what we need to do to equip ourselves, to commit ourselves, to devote our selves. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.